It's been a labor of love. It's uh, amazing to finally be here. <clears throat> Everybody on our staff, uh, the players, coaches, our front office couldn't be more excited. Uh, but to be clear, something of this magnitude doesn't happen without a lot of help, starting with the commissioner and the NWSL. Uh, our friends here at Daytona with Frank, uh, as well as Ignacio and JP from Tornados, bringing this all together, and of course uh, our friends at Louisville. So we couldn't be more excited to put our team, our brand, and our league on the world stage uh, tonight at the uh, World Center of Racing. Back in April, you know there was a, a lot of hype you know, into this. There still is, but a lot has changed within the club uh, in terms of Amanda and Sydney leaving. Um, what kind of vibe around the club have you kind of gotten uh, just over the last couple months in preparation for this and uh, how do you feel that the team stands uh, right now just in terms of uh, you know the, the club as a whole yeah you know I think listen there's been a lot of change I think everybody knows that and we're working through a challenging time but I would tell you that our team and our players are laser focused on playing soccer to the best of their abilities uh, we communicate with them often uh, and I think in times like this, just being open and transparent as much as we can, working with our partners at the league has been on the forefront of our minds. So um, having my daughters and my wife and some other friends greet the team coming off the bus tonight and seeing, seeing all those faces and uh, high fives, they're, they're ready to go. So they're focused on soccer. Uh, we're going to do everything we can on the business side to work with our general manager, making the soccer decisions as well as the league and everybody else involved to continue to make sure we have the best team going forward. Thank you. Can I talk about, um, I was obviously I asked uh, the commissioner this as well, but talk about the adaptability that you've seen, especially especially with everything that's been going on yeah. with the Pride, but also with what you see here for, for Soccer Fest and seeing it come together. I, talk about it, I mean, it's been amazing. I remember first, <clears throat> excuse me, it was back in January, I probably was on the job for a couple weeks when I got the first call about potentially participating in this event. So fast forward to now where we are, and at the time, I was like, well, that sounds cool, you know, pipe dream, pretty grandiose. I don't know if can we actually pull that off. So uh, I mentioned all the partners that were involved in the stakeholders in pulling this off, and it really wouldn't have worked without everybody's uh, input and help, quite frankly, because there's a lot of times, as the commissioner said, where you know if you're going to be a challenger brand, you're going to be risk-taking and innovate, you have to do things like this. And for us, is the pride to be able to grow our fan base, uh, to be able to you know stretch outside of Orlando and introduce ourselves to new uh, new people, new fans, people have never taken in a game before. Uh, couldn't be more excited about that. And to, to your point about uh, adaptability, I mean that's that's what these athletes do. They're the best athletes in the world for a reason. They face adversity and, and they're adaptable their entire lives. So us as a front office, we try to follow their lead, quite frankly. Sir, is this, uh, is this a, the beginning of a new uh, summer tournament, especially when the NWSL, in my opinion, is the best league in the world? Yes. And then you have other, I mean, probably FIFA doesn't think that way. Mm -hmm. It's a little more to the European uh, clubs. But when they come sometimes, uh, the, the defending champions mm -hmm. from Champions League women, mm -hmm. They come to uh, United States. Right. They, I, mean, I mean, they lost last, yeah. last time. Yeah. But this is something that you guys can bring uh, European clubs in, in place on the next summers. Yeah, I think I think it could be right. So this weekend so far has been fantastic. We're going to deliver a great event tonight, and all the experts here running the track and putting on the tournament with tornadoes first class they know what they're doing so i would not be shocked if there is a long list of teams that want to come play uh going forward in either this match or others similar to this that they put on so orlando pride would love to be a part of that as well uh so we'll continue to work on that in our relationships you, you mentioned you. the team has has faced adversity how do you how do you weather this storm keep the morale up and maybe yeah. you know um push the league a little bit it's been yeah. a while push the league a little bit to get a decision that yeah you can move forward with. listen i i in my humble opinion, we've weathered the storm. The, this team has been rock solid throughout everything that's going on. Anytime there's changes to a roster, all of, us, all of us have seen this in professional sports, turnover in rosters as you're rebuilding and doing those things. Uh, and, and the athletes understand that that happens, right? So we're working really hard with our general manager, our ownership team, to make sure they have the resources during this transfer window and going forward to go out and acquire new players, uh, build across with the, the great team that we already have, some really talented women in that locker room, and build around that. So we're going to continue to do that, continue to give them the resources to do that. We just had a great signing on Friday with a new international player we're really excited about, but there'll be more to come. So I'm very confident uh, with our coaching staff, all of our coaching staff, as we work through uh, this entire process with the league, that we are going to come through this an even better franchise than we were prior. Jared, what, for, for what, you personally, it, it, you're kind of in the same boat as Jessica. You mm -hmm. just started this year. Yeah. And, 
you've kind of felt your way around through things. Um, you know, I've seen you at, at have a presence at practices and show up and talk to players. And how have you kind of found that that uh, integration with yeah. with this team and, and kind of getting your feet wet within NWSL and, and MLS? It's really been threefold uh, for me. So to be able to right away embrace the team and get to know folks, even though you know I don't oversee the soccer operations, I oversee business. But to be close to that and have those connections, maybe it's the old former washed up athlete to me. To you just feel like you connect with people, and we have such an amazing group of, uh, of women. I, I just love being around them and their energy. Uh, the second part being our front office, our staff. I've been lucky. I've been blessed to do this for 20 some odd years in my career and I've never been around a harder working group of people um, to handle everything we have with our three clubs, a stadium year round, all those things and do it with as much grace as they do. It's unbelievable. And then third, our fan base. Um, you know, the Orlando Pride has some of the most loyal fans in the world. Just look at Twitter. We interact together. We go hang out with our supporter groups, the Black Swans, and our season ticket members. So when you combine all three of those things, for me, that's a recipe for success, and that's what we're laser focused on doing moving forward. What do, what do you want to see on the next six months? Next six months for me. So on the business side, it's continue to grow our brand continue to be a challenger brand and really be innovative, right? Do things like we're doing today. Uh, continue to grow attendance, continue to grow our partnership portfolio. Uh, number two, support our club. Everything we can do from a resource standpoint on the business side to give our general manager and our coaches everything they need to be successful, that's what we're going to be laser focused on. Kind of Thank the, you. The play is playing tonight, bro. How's the Orlando City excited towards the semifinal of the US Open Cup? Oh, very excited, yes. Uh, the men have been doing great. Uh, big match tomorrow uh, in Orlando on, on Monday. Um, we're excited about the season. Uh, like you said, semifinals of the U.S. Open Cup and playing great during the MLS season as well. Uh, so we're excited for them. But tonight and this weekend is all about the pride. And I'll tell you, the team, the men are rooting. We've been texting, talking to some of them. They are rooting and watching this game tonight as well uh, in support of, uh, of our ladies. Sorry. While you have been in trouble with the Orlando Pride as a coach, it looks like in Oscar Pareja you guys have a great coaching and you don't have any trouble at all. Yeah, Oscar and his staff have been phenomenal. Uh, we're going to continue to work closely with them, a very tight-knit group. Uh, they bring a lot of, obviously, a lot of experience with them. They've been successful everywhere they've been. Uh, we're going to continue, like I said, with the Pride to lean in and give as many resources as we can to, to the men's side as well. So you were mentioning attendance and end of the cell. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, weekly they have like a hundred thousands of viewers, yeah. but the stadiums doesn't reflect that. It's something that's in your agenda to bring more people to the stadium to support the team. Absolutely, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing this. We want to expose our brand and the game, the women's game, to more people that have never seen it before. So when you can take an event like this and marry it up with all the fun activities that are going on for families, uh, my daughter's out fishing right now. Two of my other daughters are with my wife watching channel the rapper you have the music you have the soccer you have all these things going on that was one of the things that really attracted us to this event and being a part of it so we need to do more of that but back in Orlando make no buts about it we are laser focused on continuing to grow our marketing our ticket sales our suite sales and our corporate partnerships so we do need to be better there and that's part of our commitment to the team is providing those resources to do that Jared, kind of going off of that with the fans, how important is it to have that dialogue with them, especially with everything that's gone on in the last couple of months, to, to make sure that they know that they are uh, supported and that there's is still, you know. Extremely, extremely important. And quite frankly, and I'll take the lead as the organization, we probably haven't been as communicative yet as we wanted to. Uh, we a lot of things going on, middle of multiple seasons, but you're going to see us being more out front with our fans, giving them more access. We have some season ticket member uh, virtual town halls that will take place soon. Uh, we had some communication with uh, some of our supporter groups, uh, our supporter groups uh, the other night, and just dialogue, just having conversation, right? So, you know, me taking to Twitter, making sure people understand that our organization and, and our, our ownership group love the pride. They're not going anywhere. This is our team. They're staying in Orlando. And there's no questions about that. You know, Twitter and social media can sometimes be a, a dark space. Uh, and again, I just come from the world. Let's just, just be open and transparent and talk about what we're doing and how we're trying to build uh, the project that we have in front of us. You talked about building the brand, building the fan base. What are some of the additional ways that, um, now you've been here a bit, yeah. that the front offices, especially from the business side, is looking yeah. to build it? So for the pride specifically, I think one of the best ways we'll do that is having more dedicated resources. You know, the commissioner talked a little bit about shared resources with te clubs that have multiple teams. We've done that. We're, we will continue to do that, but we're also uh, layering in now additional staff dedicated to the pride for ticket sales marketing partnerships looking at different ways that we can do that just to be more laser focused and intentional about our pride team so that's one number two continuing to do great work in the community 
you know, we're fortunate that we live in one of the most diverse, incredible cultures and in, in in the world in Orlando and the surrounding area uh, and our team is amazing they want to be out in the community they will do that every single time we ask so our charge as a business group is to give them opportunities to do that and then third I think is connecting with kind of the, the next the next generation of fans we have the hardcore women's soccer fans in Orlando and Florida we have those fans and now our job is to continue to embrace them but also grow that bring more casual fans in get people introduced that have never been to a pride match before maybe never seen a professional soccer match at all so I think those three things are really our main focus right now. Really proud to say year over year, we have invested in the team. We're continuing to do that. I think we grew our uh, budget roughly 40% in terms of investing in the team year over year uh, with the Will family when they bought the team and took over. So I, I couldn't be more bullish on us as a brand right now for the pride. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to the future. Especially in women's soccer, people kind of, yeah, people, uh, kind of uh, are more attracted to names, mm. big names, U.S. women's national yeah. players. When you're going through a rebuild like this, can you talk a little bit about the challenge of building a brand and building a fan base when you don't really have those big names? Yeah, I think all of us as fans, right, we're all fans and have been in our in our lives. You get attached to certain players, and so whenever there's changes, that's always hard. But I think at the end of the day, we have to really remember that it's all about you know, that, that logo on the front of the jersey, not necessarily the name on the back. And to build a championship culture and team, that's what you really need to be focused on. I've been fortunate to work in professional football, baseball, hockey, and now professional soccer. And I think it's true across all of those to have a real ongoing relationship with your fans year in and year out. Right? Players sometimes come, players sometimes go, for whatever reason it is, but that pride logo is always there. Right? And so we need to be focused on that process and giving the resources to our soccer operations team to be able to do that, to continue to be able to build a championship caliber product. Cool. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jared.